It's been 6 months since the last major Shindo life update. So today we'll be going over what went wrong, what went right, and why the game isn't updating anymore. Starting off positively with what went right with the game. On release Shindo Life quickly became one of the biggest games on Roblox. And for good reason. Rail games would constantly update the game and new content would be added weekly. And it wasn't like this content was copy pasted or lazily made. These updates would include some game changing content. Rail games would add brand new game modes that allowed you to get new abilities in the game. Or add some of the community's most wanted bloodlines. Like the Rinnegan and the Itachi Shiringan. Everything was going great, and huge additions to the game like War Mode and Tail Beast Chakra Cloaks would shape the game for what it is today. The game was growing exponentially, and it looked like nothing was going to stop it from growing. Rail Games even added Xbox compatibility to maximize their player base, but unknown to everyone at the time. This would be the last update before the game would be taken down for copyright. The game would come back a few weeks later, but it wasn't the same. However, that didn't stop Rail Games and the game's growth. Although it took a little hit in players, the game was still growing and maintained most of its community. The game continued getting big updates, like Full Susan O and Karma Seals, that added new abilities to get and use in game. The game was garnering an extremely loyal role playing community in the game's open world game mode. A community of people, that would be the sole reason the game is still popular today. But unfortunately, all good things come to an end. And Shindo Life's update started taking a turn for the worse. The addition of the Rini Sherigan or Singoku, would be one of the first updates, that changed the game's PvP. It added an extremely broken bloodline, that could literally one-shot a whole group of people in two moves and thus started the era of overpowered Shindo life bloodlines. Rail games would continue to consistently update the game weekly, and the bloodlines would be more and more broken. Rail games would add bloodlines like Ryuji Kenichi and Shindei Akuma, that made it possible for anyone with an overpowered bloodline, to dominate an entire server. These bloodlines wouldn't be too big of an issue, if not for how insanely pay to win they were. They would be extremely rare to spend for, and could be bought for Robux. Making anyone with enough money instantly better than a majority of the player base, just because they spent money. Shindo Life also has a ton of game passes. These game passes include things like extra bloodline slots, halved bloodline rarities, private servers, and a bloodline bag that allowed you to equip any bloodline you have, even if you spun it away. Which would easily be the most overpowered game pass in the entire game because anyone with the bloodline bag could just use whatever bloodline was good at the time, or not have to worry about spinning away anything rare. Speaking of spinning. Shindo Life has arguably the worst spin system of all time. There is a 5 second spin animation, that you can of course, spend money to completely skip. And 9 times out of 10, you would wait 5 seconds, just to spin a common bloodline. Spinning takes so long, that at max 500 spins, it takes well over an entire hour to just use up all your spins. Rail Games tried to combat this, by adding Rail Coins and the Rail Coins Shop. This shop gave free to play players the ability to use the bloodline bag if they had bloodlines from the rail coin shop and gave players a surefire way to get bloodlines they wanted by buying them through rail coins. The rail coin shop even added a bunch of new cosmetics that people could wear and the shop had daily sales on certain items. All of this stuff sounds really cool, but with no real way of obtaining rail coins, it made it insanely hard to actually use a shop. Everyone relied on codes that provided rail coins, and the only game modes that gave the currency would be either broken, or give barely any rail coins to the point where it would take weeks of grinding to save up for the best items in the rail coin shop. One of the biggest problems with the game would be its core. Shindo Life is a bandit beater, and for a majority of the game, 
players are just grinding missions, and ranking up to unlock more abilities and get better. And grinding bosses for scrolls is a really time consuming task. If you're not lucky enough you can be grinding the same boss for hours and still not get the scrolls you want. And if you don't have good grinding bloodlines, it's almost impossible to progress. So in reality, Shindo Life's PvE is not really interesting, and it's frankly pretty boring. And it's something real games can really do nothing about. It'll be almost impossible to not make Shindo Life a bandit beta with how it's structured. And that's something the game will just be forever. These weren't the only issues. Updates were getting clearly stale and didn't really add new content. It was basically just a new bloodline that everyone forgot about every week. But it wasn't like Rel Games wasn't trying to add new content to the game. They made live events that would be insanely successful and revolutionary on Roblox. But even those got boring with no real differences between live events. The addition of content outside of Naruto also didn't help Shindo Life's case. A lot of people didn't like the idea of Shindo Life having content from outside of Naruto, and it was a reason people quit the game. I mean having a Naruto based game with a Luffy Gear 5 bloodline and Star Platinum mode does sound a bit strange. All of these factors would cause the game to lose players and updates would gradually release slower and slower, leading to the eventual state of the game right now, with no real updates in 6 months, and the game having lots of bugs and glitches, like dungeons still not saving your data. So, why did Shindo Life's updates stop? After going over the negatives, it's pretty easy to see why the game's updates stopped. Shindo Life was losing players, and Rel Games realized that. Shindo Life is pretty outdated compared to the newer style of Roblox games, and Rel Games believed it was easier to start over than try to completely revamp Shindo Life. So as of now, Rel Games is more focused on their newer projects. Those being Rel Season Ninden. Rel Seas is a game based on One Piece, and is hyped up as a game that will rival Block's fruits. It's supposed to be an RPG style game with content and a style never seen in a popular Roblox game before, with a release date supposedly sometime in early 2024, and Ninden is hyped as Shindo Life's predecessor, as of now we only have limited leaks of Ninden. But for now, we know that Ninden is going to be a purely Naruto based game, and will also be an RPG style game with skill trees and an inventory, where you store all of your abilities. And all of the sneaks of the game show very high quality models. Is it sad that Shindo Life has lost its popularity? Yes. But is the future bright for the next Rel Games projects? Also yes. If Rel Seas lives up to the hype, it'll be a one of a kind Roblox game, and hopefully stop the cycle of bad games. Because as of right now, Roblox games are pretty bad and really just uncreative. So to say Roblox needs some good games is an understatement. And everyone is desperate for something good to play.